Sweet. So this chapter is all about current and resistance. And like I said, I brought a couple things from the next chapter. Just kind of throw it in there. I feel like it breaks up better with this. But the whole chapter is going to center around current resistance. So normally we talk about current outside of a physics contest. You might context you might be thinking about like the flow of water. So through a pipe or down a you know river or whatever like that. So in this case, we're not talking about the flow of water. We're talking about the flow of charge or electricity in this case, a so flow of charge. So and as long as I'm talking about a conducting wire or something of that sort, so some sort of conductor, what is actually the charge that's flowing? Negative, Negative charges, electrons that are flowing, right? So now we have some cases where we might have like electricity being conducted through an ionic liquid or through uh, a solution with ions dissolved in or something like that. And that might actually involve the flow of both positive and negative charges. But if we're talking about, you know, typical conduction through the wires in the wall here or something like that, or the wi wires in the lamp or whatever, we're talking about the flow of electrons through the conductor. So unfortunately, back in the day, they really didn't know what was flowing. And it could be, you know, the, the result of positive charges flowing this way or negative charges flowing this way is tough to differentiate. And so they just decided to make it the flow of positive charges flowing this way. So, and we teach physics that way from here on out for a couple hundred years. So here's the deal. Uh, when we talk about conventional current, it's on your hand out there. So we're kind of, you, normally when we're talking about normal circuits and stuff, we're talking about the imaginary flow of positive charges from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Know that the truth is the electrons are flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. But we'll teach this from the context of conventional current. So if you hear the term conventional current, know that that means the imaginary flow of positive charges. <clears throat> okay. So I is your symbol for current, and it is simply the amount of charge that passes through, say, a wire or whatever through a given period of time. Charge per time. So in this case, what's the SI unit for charge? Coulombs, Coulombs and time, seconds. And a coulomb per second gets its own special term here, and that's the ampere, or amps for short. So, and that is your coulomb per second. Cool. So a couple things to think about. Uh, essentially, all we're doing is we're applying an electric field to the electrons in a wire, and they're going to move opposite, you know, that direction of the electric field. So in this case, if I turn a light switch on, how long does it take for a light typically to turn on? So that's not a time, right? <laughs> that's a velocity. But, but if, I turn, if I flip the light switch, how long does it take for the, the light to turn on? Pretty quick. Are the electrons in the wire moving at the speed of light? You said 3.0 times 10 to the eighth so just a second ago, and they are not. They're not even close to moving at the speed of light. So if they're not even close to moving at the speed of light, how do we reconcile the fact that the light turns on so quickly? So I think about it this way. If I turn on my hose in my backyard, so, and water comes out pretty darn quickly out the other end, is the water flowing at the speed of light? Well, definitely not. We wouldn't confuse this one, right? So, but the idea is that if the hose is full of water, let's say it's not an empty hose, but one I've been using continually, you know, throughout the past several days, and so it's already full of water. So if I turn water on at one end, as it starts to flow in, almost immediately water is going to flow out the other end because it's full. Same thing we have with our wires. They are full of mobile electrons. And so if I start the flow of electrons in one end, they're going to start moving out the other end pretty quickly. So but keep in mind, they're not even close to moving at the speed of light. The, the speed is usually much lower in any kind of normal electric field we might apply uh, to the electrons in that wire. So just one thing to note. I uh, also want to jump into Ohm's law here. So an Ohm's law just relates the potential difference we apply across the electrons in a wire, uh, the current flowing through the wire, and then the resistance, potentially that's either in the wire itself or potentially from some sort of external resistor we might put in the circuit or something along those lines. So it just gives us this normal, lovely equation. If we rearrange this a little bit, um, <coughs> solve for I, what would the current be equal to? And so how does I, how is it related to delta V? Your change in potential, your potential difference. Directly proportional. A bigger potential difference is going to lead to a bigger current. But how is it related to R? 
inversely proportional. And resistance is exactly what it sounds like. It resists the flow of current. The bigger the resistance, then the less current you're going to get. So and this is for different reasons. So uh, we might talk about the intrinsic resistance of certain metals and stuff like that. Metals are typically good conductors, so, but they're not perfect conductors by any stretch. So, and they have a certain resistance to the flow of electrons. And the electrons are bouncing off the atoms as they, you know, uh, flow through the wire and the, the nuclei of the atoms and stuff like that as they flow through the wire, things of that sort. Um, so, but wires themselves have a certain resistance and then we can have certain objects that will act as a resistor like your typical light bulb. So if you look at your old school tungsten filament light bulb, your tungsten filament is acting like a resistor and it dissipates energy so as the electrons flow through it, and so the electrons end up with starting out with higher energy and end up on the other side with lower energy. Or if we switch to talking about conventional current, your imaginary positive charges <laughs> flow from one side of the tungsten filament and start out with higher energy and end up with a lower energy on the other side. And so if we look, typically, if I want to raise the potential of these electrons, we use something like a battery. So and a battery is just there to raise the potential energy of, those, uh, of the current, the flow of charges here imaginary positive charges, whereas a resistor is actually going to do the exact opposite. It's going to lower that potential energy of the charges flowing through the circuit. Everybody cool with that? Cool. But I give you any two of these three, you should be able to calculate the other two. All right. So if you look, get into question number one. Question number one simply is just looking at this relationship. It says, what is the potential drop across a two ohm resistor having a current of three amps flowing through it? So in this case, we just want that potential drop, that delta V here. And so we're told the current. What's the current? Three amps. Cool. And what's the resistance? Cool. And you see this is the symbol for ohms, and that's your SI unit for resistance here. So, and you multiply amps times ohms, you should get units of? Volts. Cool. And we can see that the potential drop across that resistor is going to be 6 volts. Now technically we might actually calculate delta V to be negative 6 volts because it's a potential drop across that resistor. So just like again, so as a imaginary positive charges flow across that resistor, do they gain energy or lose energy? They lose energy. So and that loss in energy is Q delta V and to be a loss in energy means delta V would have to actually be negative. Well, the way it works. If you're going across a resistor, yes, it is. But if, you're, if the electrons are going through a battery, that's the exact time when the potential energy is raised, and that's where delta V would be positive. So if I have a 12-volt battery, that means as the electrons pass through, the imaginary positive charges, my bad, flow through that battery, their potential is raised 12 volts. Whereas when they go through the resistor, their potential goes down. So they have to specify which resistor or battery. Correct. I mean, you're not going to be usually doing anything with batteries. And notice this equation right here specifically is for as it goes through resistor. Now it turns out, we'll talk next week a little bit about how batteries have their own special internal resistance that we usually just ignore and say it's small enough to ignore, stuff like that. But normally, therefore, we'll just be talking about external resistors that are external to the battery.